Hello, Global Gladiators. Today we're back looking at Street Masters Rise of the Kingdom. I had a few requests to look at stages, so today we're going to look at Steel Memories. This stage is different in that it has a pool of extra minions that will constantly be brought back in to attack you. The only way to reduce that pool is to do such an amazing defeat of their friends that it demoralizes them to the point of quitting. I'm not sure if it takes place at an uh, enemy job fair or some type of family reunion, but whatever the case is, they're going to keep coming in until you tell them to stop. The stage can be quite difficult, you get surrounded easily. If you're the underdog, maybe you get a little help, maybe you get a little demoralized yourself if you're surrounded by so many enemies. Let's take a quick look at how to set up the board. First thing you should do is set up the tokens on the board, starting with the loot tokens. Then go through the deck and see if you can find an objective card that will give you an indication as to whether or not they should be active or inactive at the start of the round. These cards don't say that they're present at the start of the round, so they just don't appear on the board yet. Now that those are on the board, you're going to want to fish out any reference cards that are important to this map. The front side of our stage setup card is telling us that we need to go find a fresh recruits card and 30 unused minion figures. I prefer to use, say, 8 minion figures and then keep some dice handy as a counter that counts down from 30, but it's up to you however you want to play. The other thing to notice is on the back of the Steel Memories card, there's an activate. That activate goes into your stage area. When they're placed correctly, it looks like this. So I have my recruit counter at the top. The card is available for me to look at. I see that they have one health and they have one attack. My stage card is placed on the left side, ready to activate first. And I can read the recruit space information. It says that the recruit space is blocked. It has the icon of the plus with the little figurehead. So the only thing left for me to do is to pick some fighters and a boss. Obviously if you're going through a story you'll use whatever characters you use for the story. For me I'm going to use Kimono, Natalia, and Megan. I did a long 40 minute video about turn orders and how to play through a full playthrough with two fighters. So we're just going to kind of skip ahead to the stage card pulls for this example. Right now we're going to take a look at what would happen if you pulled one of those objective cards. I'm going to move people around in between examples to show that things have happened, but you don't necessarily have to move anything. Just know that they're moving as an example of what their normal motion would be. So here we're going to say that they defeated the minions that occurred during their threat phase, and now we're moving on. Kimono has taken his action, and we're now at the stage uh, turn. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our card that's on the left hand side. Since this is the first turn, there are no fresh recruits to put out or to advance two spaces in attack. So that means we need to place one refresh recruit token in each empty space. You can pick whatever fighter from your minions uh, that are in your fresh recruits pile that you want to use, whichever one you think is cool looking. I happen to just like using the ninjas because they're pretty uniform. They only have one health, so you don't really need to track them by color. As soon as they get hit, they go away back to their fresh recruits pile. I would like to note that they go back to the fresh recruits pile and it does not change the counter. The only thing that changes the counter is very specific actions that say it changes the counter. Now we're going to pull a stage card and luckily it's a crowbar. We'll place the token on the inactive objective and we'll be able to use this to help stop the supply of fresh recruits from continually attacking us and regenerating. So we'll look at an example of how this happens. Natalia's turn will come up. She's going to use her move action to grab the purple objective. She's going to sprint over to where 
the fresh recruit is standing and attack she only has to do one hit she could play a card doesn't matter how she attacks but it goes away and empties out the space we'll then use the feint that is on the crowbar to block the space making it uh, have the active side of the objective token up the fresh recruit that was defeated goes back to the supply and we'll speed things up say Megan gets a turn Kimono gets a turn and we're back to the stage action for the second stage action now that we have fresh recruits in play we have to advance them two steps towards the nearest fighter and attack and then replace them from the supply in the fresh recruit spaces noting that the space blocked by the crowbar will not receive a fresh recruit. As you can see from the swarm on the board, fighters that can handle a lot of enemies surrounding them or engage with them are gonna do much better in this map. Now we're gonna look at a card that will allow you to reduce some of that fresh recruit supply and that's Demoralizing Finisher. You should pick the fighter with the highest damage potential and place this in their in their play area. Not so much for how many targets they can hit, but for how much damage they can do to a single target. So the excess damage that is given during an attack, you can use this card with the faint ability to apply that to the fresh recruit supply. You can game it a little bit and try to get that fresh recruit number as close to one as possible and then do another massive attack which will go in for double against the boss. If you get a little overzealous with the crowbars you won't be able to use this tactic if there are no fresh recruits able to get back onto the map and you'll just have to defeat the boss normally. Those are the basic mechanics of how to use the Steel Memories map and deck. Give it a shot, try your best combinations of fighters, Maybe you can do it easy with one fighter, maybe you can do it easy with four fighters. Do whatever is the most fun for you. It's a challenging map, but once you get the hang of it, you'll come up with a strategy that works for you and the fighters you like to play. One thing you can do if you're having too much of a problem with this map is just take all of the crowbars and the inactive objective tokens and put them in play for the crates. You'll be able to get to the crates a little bit easier and get those crowbars out and stop the tide of uh, the fresh recruits coming at you. And then you can maybe get the hang of the map a little more and start slowly randomizing those. As always, feel free to leave me any feedback. If this is the first video you're watching, there's this is the ninth episode and there's lots of other ones on the fighters and there's a long form video that was mentioned earlier about going through step by step a two fighter scenario if you need to go back and check those out on my channels or in the video section of the street masters fan facebook page they're all posted there